Hello again, this is World Pastor Tony Alamo. This is program number 764. If you'd like to have a copy of it, Sharon will tell you how. At the end of the program, let us know whether you want a CD or an audio tape. They're both free, including the postage and handling. I'm going to be continuing on in the book of Revelation. We're in chapter 9 now. And uh, I've got music. But right now, let's pray. Lord, that you will continue anointing me. Show the people of the world your revelations of the things that are happening now and shall surely, uh, surely soon come to pass. Lord, let everybody know who the beast is and where he's coming from. And uh, let us receive from you whatever it is that you want to say through me. Let not I be saying anything other than what you want me to say. Because only the Spirit, your Spirit, your seven spirits really lead people out of the very sinful blasphemy spirit of pride. Only you can penetrate through that enough to where people will stop having this sinful, evil spirit of pride. This is the spirit of blasphemy. People that think that they know more than you, and that they're more powerful than you, and that they're more powerful and knowledgeable than those that you are anointing, and those that you have called and chosen to lead the people out of the world, and out of the spirit, the blasphemous spirit of pride, into the spirit of the living God. Lord, I ask that you do these things and rebuke Satan, bind him as I bind him from the words that you'll be saying through me, and let souls be saved, whoever, how many you want, or penetrate into their blasphemous skulls and their pride, their spirit full of pride that they know something that's of value. Only you, Lord, are of value. I ask that you open doors for us, and, Lord, shut every door to Satan. Open up many doors for us. In Jesus' name, and everyone says, Amen. Amen. Now, there's no friend to me like Jesus, because, you know, we can take everything to the Lord in prayer. And he accommodates us if we're really out of the spirit of pride, which is blasphemy. And we are just his. We just belong to him. And we're not ashamed of being the Lord's. We're not ashamed of being his at all. And he gives us everything that we need. Healing, the power to win people to the Lord, There's no friend to me like Jesus. And I recorded this years ago with our uh, unprofessional uh, orchestra and singers, but it sounds good, you know, the way they play and everything. So let's hear it again. It's been a long time.
keep his commandments and we cannot fall it's impossible so the word of god is jesus and um jesus uh, will never let us fall away if we do what the word of god tells us to do now we're in chapter nine of the book of revelation this is first one of chapter nine and the fifth angel sounded and i saw a star fall from the heaven unto earth and to him was so we know that this is a messenger or an angel from god and he was given a chore he was given the key of the bottomless pit and he opened it he did what the lord says verse two and he opened the bottomless pit and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit well why would god do his thing like that well because everybody's so smart they're just so full of blasphemy so full of pride pride pushes god away i mean we don't need god we don't need anything like god Let's push him away. Well, so the Lord sends out one of the angels and darkens. He opens this uh, bottomless pit and out there, out of it comes all this smoke of a great, powerful, mighty furnace. And the sun, so much uh, smoke that the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Now, that's really... uh, now uh, you know everything well let him try to figure this one out you smart alex how come you're breathing in smoke and you can't even get any sunshine anymore verse three and there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power well we know what the kind of power is of a scorpion on earth we're talking about heaven and earth this is earth that we're talking about now that is receiving all these um, wonderful things to the people of earth that have so much pride that they push god away and they become antichrist against god all right so God's showing them little by little, which seems to be a lot by the people on earth, that uh, who has the power, really? Okay, you people, if you've got so much power, turn it off. Turn off the smoke. And now get rid of these locusts that's coming out of this pit that have stingers on them. Like, uh, uh, like the, the power of a scorpion. Verse 4, And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth like uh, these uh, locusts usually do. They ate everything up. 
Now it don't uh, hurt the grass, neither any green thing, which locusts are known to do. They just eat everybody's crops up immediately. They go fast. Neither uh, any tree. Don't hurt trees or, you know, green things or the your lawns or whatever. But only those men hurt those men. Hurt those men. This is God sending these locusts and commanding them, don't uh, hurt any green thing. Don't hurt fruits and vegetables and things like that. But only those men which have not the seal of God in their uh, foreheads. They're the ones full of blasphemy, pride, Tennessee pride, and they just push God away. And so therefore there's no seal of God in their foreheads. Hmm. Verse 5. And, the, you know, you notice that the Lord is the one ordering them to do this. Well, is it of the Lord? Huh? Yeah. Is it of the Lord if the Lord's telling them to do it? Yeah. Well, then, uh, you know, don't be uh, saying, well, God's supposed to be full of love. No, that's the stuff uh, that your um, false prophets are telling you, that he's just love, 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 love. And he doesn't have any enemies, and that uh, this is all hogwash. It's uh, foolish to say such things as that. Verse 5. And to them it was given, these locusts, that they should not kill them, the men, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the uh, torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. Now that is really bad because it stings like a bee. And these locusts that have these stingers on them that hurt, I just keep stinging men constantly for five months. And in those days shall men seek death. I want to die. I don't want to get stung anymore. I mean, it just keeps happening all the time, all during the day. And they'll seek death and shall not find it. The Lord wants you to enjoy yourself. Now, you people full of pride, which is the same spirit of blasphemy, you push away God. And so he doesn't want you to die yet. Uh, I would say that the Lord is uptight with these kind of people. Wouldn't you? Amen. It's full of pride. But in other words, they say blasphemous things about God. They like to go to these comedy houses and make jokes about God. And uh, they're just so full of pride that they think that they can sit here on earth and they're made out of dirt and that they can say things uh, blasphemy against God. Now, the Bible says that the beast has on his forehead the word blasphemy. Blasphemy. Full of pride. And so they're going to seek death, uh, and they cannot find it. And shall uh, desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Oh, you mean we got to go through this? You know, I've been in such pain before that I wish I would die so the pain would leave. And that's what all these people are going to be doing. Okay, verse 7. And the shapes of the locusts. Let's see, what were they like? They were like unto horses prepared unto battle. And on their heads were as it were crowns like gold. And their faces were as the faces of men. Well, when you see a crown... 
these people, um, it's like the beast has uh, seven crowns. One crown isn't enough for this weasel. He has to have seven crowns and seven horns uh, because this is the nature of the beast. He's full of pride. Uh, seven crowns on his wicked head. And so the Lord torments uh, the people that follow after this uh, beast, this blasphemous beast. He sends uh, a little locust that look like horses, and each one of them has crowns like gold, golden crowns on their heads, and their faces were as the faces of men. Here, no, you, you think you're uh, the king of the a hill, but uh, I'm going to send these little insects to you. Uh, that they're going to torment you so much, and that I'm going to make them king over you. I'm going to send them with crowns on their heads to show you how much I think about you people. You blaspheme me, and so now I'm going to really give it to you. And I, when I promise something, it's going to happen. Okay, because I can't lie like you people do. Now, uh, so they're the faces or the faces of men. Verse 8. And they had hair as the hair of women, which is really repugnant to a bunch of pride-filled, uh, blasphemous men to have a woman, something that looks like a woman, have a, uh, power and dominion over them. To the point to where they hurt him so much that they pray to die and they can't. They want to die and they can't. And they had the hairs, the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. The work that they're doing is like so overpowering. It's like they're like lions. And who is going to be able to uh, take especially blasphemous people that are full of pride. Uh, they, they've been lounging around and uh, strutting like Nebuchadnezzar, who thought he was so wonderful and had everything. And the Lord made him crawl around out in the field eating grass. He turned him into a beast. <laughs> That's why the Lord calls these people the beast. All of them are members of the Antichrist, full of blasphemy. And so these, uh, the reason they have teeth like lions is because there's nothing that they can do about them. They just keep tearing them to pieces. And they pray to die. They can't. They try. If death flees from them. Verse 9. And they had breastplates, as it were, uh, breastplates of iron. In other words, no one can get them to become sympathetic towards them. It's in their heart because God planted it in their hearts to tear these people to pieces. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. Because they're, 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 God sent them into battle. He sent them to do these things. And once God sends something like a dreaded disease unto you or uh, these creatures, there's anything you can do about it. And uh, the noise, the Lord makes them have noise, like chariots of many horses running to battle. Verse 10, and they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. 
Well, how could you say? The Lord doesn't like people that blaspheme him, that are full of blasphemy. As a matter of fact, if you are a blasphemer, uh, those that blaspheme the Holy Spirit, there's no forgiveness for them in this world or in the world to come. So the Lord wants to uh, everyone to see this scripture fulfilled that are of the Lord so that they can know for sure that these people are going to spend eternity in a place that's far worse than what they're receiving now. They're going to hell in the lake of fire. And they had, see, the Lord resists the proud. Amen? Amen. The Lord resists the pride, and he... Uh, gives power to the humble. I saw myself in heaven, you know, and I thought, my God, I'm like strutting around here, uh, animated and looking very uh, proud. But the pride that Christians have <clears throat> is that they know they're proud of God. They're proud of Jesus. Jesus is God. And they're proud that they made it into the kingdom of God. And there's nothing wrong with being proud of God, but to walk around thinking that you have anything to be proud of, you're blasphemers. You push God away. You um, you love to go places where you can hear blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. So you've taken the mark of the beast already, but you'll very willingly take it in your flesh when they come around. Now, you know, we don't want anybody stealing your identity, do you? Uh, no, sir, we don't. Well, then uh, take this mark, the mark of the beast, the mark of pride to know that you can go shopping and the other ones that are sailor of the Lord cannot shop. They cannot sell. They can't buy. They can't do anything. So we're maneuvered there, uh, this beast, this antichrist, this blasphemer, this one that's so full of pride, thinks he's very wise to corner people like that. Look, if you uh, want to buy and sell, if you want to feed your family, then take the mark of the beast. Well, the Lord doesn't like these people. He knows what they're up to. He knows what they've got up their sleeves. So five months, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the uh, Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, 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 Abaddon. But in the Greek tongue has uh, his name, Apollyon, Apollyon. Verse 12, one woe is past. Well, that would be a woe if you just kept getting stung for uh, five months, wouldn't it? And you couldn't die? Yeah. And you wanted to? So one woe is past. And behold, there come two woes more hereafter. And I see that it's time for everyone to be reconciled to God. And the way that we get reconciled is we accept God's only begotten Son at that time. And uh, the one who never sinned from the day he was born to the day that he was crucified. So I say this prayer to the Lord God through Jesus' name. To say, my Lord and my God, have mercy upon my soul, a sinner. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God, and I believe that he died on the cross and shed his precious blood for the forgiveness of all my former filthy sins. And I believe that you, Father, raised Jesus from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. I open the door of my heart, and I invite you into my heart, Lord Jesus, Holy Father, the Holy Spirit, 
Jesus, wash all my former filthy sins away in the precious blood that you shed for me on the cross at Calvary. You will not turn me away, Lord Jesus. You will save my soul. I know because your word says so. You value your word higher than your name. And so, therefore, I trust your word. And I love your word. Therefore, I know you've heard me and you've answered me. And I know I'm saved. And therefore, I just praise and thank you, Lord. Raise your hands up and praise and thank the Lord for saving your eternal soul. And Sharon, tell everyone how to receive a copy of this program, number 764. It's free. Go to alamoministries.com. Email us at taoffice at alamoministries.com or write to Tony Alamo Christian Ministries, P.O. Box 2948, Hollywood, California, 90078, or call area code 661-252-5686. That's 661-252-5686. All right, this is World Pastor Tony Alamo. Make sure to tune in tomorrow so that you can learn the reality of the 11th chapter of the book of Revelation. We're going to keep reading on. God bless you and praise the Lord. Amen.